Hawkins comes away and the foul is called. And Graham is held off. Hawkins is upset and I believe he's just ejected him. The great thing about Syracuse Georgetown is there's great memories and great uh, disappointments on both sides. You, do, you develop the hatred. I, I, I think you develop it when you sign. Once you sign, you sign up for, all right, you automatically don't like them. I have always respected their program and Jimmy. Never could have admitted it, never would have admitted it. And I'll say you're lying if you say I said. <laughs> and Syracuse is the regular season Piggies champion. I was often asked, why is Georgetown hated by Syracuse fans? And my response was, because the Hoyas win. And the Hoyas are going to win it! Hoyas win! Hoyas win! Hoyas win! We extend a warm welcome to the administrators, coaching staff, players, and fans of Georgetown. And to everyone, welcome to the game. I think there was no rivalry at all until that Manly Fieldhouse game. It was the end of the regular season in terms of the conference and right before the first Big East Conference tournament. Syracuse had a 57 game winning streak. It was their last home game at Manly Fieldhouse before they were going to move into the new Carrier Dome the following year. My nerves were probably at the height at that point saying, what the hell am I doing closing this place? The place is going to be, you know, going mad. Everybody was pointing to Syracuse continuing that streak closing Manly Fieldhouse on a high note. And when Georgetown beat them, uh, Sleepy Floyd hit two free throws with just five seconds to go uh, to, to obviously seal the victory for Georgetown. It was really a hard loss because we really had played well and had control of the game. Once you beat them, yeah. that lent more to the significance of beating them too because you know that you escaped the posse. That's what probably precipitated me saying Manly Fieldhouse was closed for business. Manly Fieldhouse is officially closed. Manly Fieldhouse is officially closed. Manly Fieldhouse is officially closed. Oh my God, it was so, I mean, it was so in your face. It was uh, the first poke in the eye. That was like rubbing salt in the wounds of Syracuse. After en ending the 57 game win streak that Syracuse had there in their last game there before they went to the Dome. The game had more value as time went on than it did when it actually occurred. I think the rest of that Georgetown Syracuse rivalry was predicated on closing Manly Fieldhouse. You know, John Thompson and Jim Beheim, that's where the seeds of the rivalry started and the players they recruited and the teams they brought up. Syracuse and Georgetown were two college basketball goliaths and more so than anything else, ironically, they were partners in building the mystique of a conference. They put together a league in a minute and a half. And I don't care what people in this area say, it was every bit as good as the ACC, if not better, for a stretch of time. And it, and it transformed overnight uh, schools that were small eastern schools into big national programs. Sure, St. John's and Villanova and Connecticut had a role in the Big East, and it was significant. But it was Syracuse and Georgetown and the, that, that hated, bitter rivals that made the Big East a national phenomenon. When you, when you come to either program, whether it be Syracuse or Georgetown, you have to be fully aware of the, of the past. We're walking into legacies. You know, we didn't start this thing. You have to be fully aware of who came before you and what made it great in the first place. And uh, when I came to Syracuse, I knew. You know, Georgetown was their rival. And when it came time, I was going to hate them. And they were going to hate me. You know, it's just the way it is. And, that's what makes it great. That's what makes it fun. And most of them have some sense, some understanding, if not a, a keen sense. Uh, we, we make sure they know the history uh, uh, of the two programs going up there. It was a, a, a very contentious uh, rivalry in the beginning. And, you know, two fairly young coaches that were, you know, trying to establish their programs as, the, you know, the best programs. And uh, you're going to have, you know, moments and battles in, in those games that are going to get heated. And uh, we had those in those first few years. Regardless of what I felt competitively, Jim Behan is a hell of a basketball coach. And that's what made it better to dislike him. I think so much about college sports is overstated, especially when there are rivalries. These guys wanted to win. 
They wanted to beat each other. They didn't hate each other. There was such um, a difference in the physical makeup of big John Thompson compared to little Jim Beheim that whenever these two coaches went face to face at midcourt, I fully expected John Thompson to break Coach Beheim in half and use him as a toothpick. Well, they're both Hall of Fame coaches and they're both men of high integrity. And it was really interesting to watch the fans in Syracuse react to Coach Thompson. They hated him, but they respected him. The Syracuse-Georgetown rivalry had created the Big East. It helped create one of the best basketball powerhouses in the country. And um, through that, there's a bit of admiration. I, I, don't, I think that's undeniable. Georgetown was uh, against the norm of this feel-good, warm conference with uh, Raleigh and PJ and all the coaches who were just Louis Carnesecca, who were like, all part of this little fraternity. And John and Georgetown were always separate. And that built the animosity between the two schools. And it's a good thing it did, because without John's larger-than-life personality, his great players, his steadfastness in the John Thompson way of doing things, wouldn't have built the rivalry and wouldn't have built the Big East to what it became for the 80s and the 90s. And you know, you can confuse some things. I've seen way too many Syracuse-Georgetown games to try to separate them all. But what I do remember clearly was, a, in my mind, 11 seconds left. In the Carrier Dome, 1985, final seconds of the ball game, and he sprung for a jump shot, the game-winning jump shot against the Hoyas. I remember we called the play in the huddle. We were going to go to somebody else, and Pearl looked at me and said, I can make this shot. Students have crowded around the court. They're ringing the court. And I was writing on deadline, uh, being one of the college basketball writers for the Post. I was covering Georgetown as a beat writer. And I remember looking around thinking, oh, I have got to get out of here. And Pearl Washington, it's a rainbow jumper, seems to be over Michael Jackson. When the crowd rushed onto the basketball court, every table along press row was knocked over. And people come rushing onto the court like a college football game. Georgetown radio knocked off the air. Television knocked off the air. And I remember Rich Shavatkin laying on like his side on the floor getting trampled, still talking as only Rich could do saying that the Hoyas had lost this incredible game to Syracuse. The only medium that stayed on the air was the Syracuse Orangeman radio network. The losses that Georgetown suffered were actually more memorable than the victories. And I think that can only be the case when you have a truly great team, a truly great program, an iconic coach, players that stand the test of time, that they win so many games they, they just sort of blend. The losses, and Georgetown's losses were so close they were so agonizing because they almost never lost. If there's one game, one day that I would like to relive, it would be that day in 1990 when the Georgetown Hoyas came to the Carrier Dome. 33,000 fans on hand. We had three Final Four referees work in that game. And there was a call and it wasn't, it wasn't really that close to call it. And John had one official next to him and he just went after him. He got the technical. But that official left and the other second official came over to try to calm down. He went after him and got the second technical. And so that ref left. And now the third guy came over to try to, uh -huh. okay, let's, let's get this. And he got the third technical. I'm sure I had a religious experience at that point. <laughs> but I just expressed it in an awkward manner. <laughs> Pops you know, walks off the court giving this sign, uh, and that's probably what everyone's going to talk about. I thought when Coach Thompson left the arena and first waved at the fans and then waved at the fans, I think he changed, to a degree, public opinion of who he was. It, the emotions were always... You know, always very high, but, and that's the beauty of it now when you look back at it and you see the things that, that, that did happen up there. But uh, I, I don't remember why I was mad. That probably created something to be angry about, to tell you the truth. I functioned better when I thought people didn't like me than I did when I thought they did. Following that, uh, Sam Jefferson files Billy Owens, I think, at half court with one or two or three seconds left and Billy goes to the foul line. And you're down two and you have to make both or else you don't, you know, get into overtime. In a game that 
for all intents and purposes, was one. Now goes into overtime. Well, then the overtime we played it was spectacular basketball. And Georgia ended up losing. We ended up losing. The fans of Syracuse saw not only the intense coach, but also a humanistic side that I think played very, very positively into the rivalry that was Syracuse-Georgetown. I think the losses, you know, probably sit with you more, more than the wins. It was the Big East tournament when Jerry McNamara went on his four or five game spectacular run. He was unbelievable. Uh, we were one of those games. Um, and I remember going through the course that game. We controlled the game. Well, the biggest thing is we were losing. Um, of all those games in the 2006 Big East tournament, it was my favorite because we were down 15 at halftime. Until like the last six minutes when Jerry McNamara just, just went unconscious. And then in the overtime, he made everything, made some, which he had a tendency to do. Uh, and we couldn't control him. We couldn't, we couldn't. And so we went from controlling the game to losing. And then he proceeded to do it two or three nights in a row um, right. on what Syracuse fans probably would call a magical run. It was just a great game for us of, you know, right game at the right time, down 15. It was my favorite game of the tournament against your rival, down 15 at halftime, and you, and you battle back and, and you surprise them at the end. It was perfect. You hear that Syracuse and Pittsburgh are leaving the Big East. Um, you know, and once you get over you know, probably with the emotions of, of having one of the founding members leave, you know, someone, as I said earlier, that's been in many ways linked with Georgetown. Um, the world is changing. The Big East will be missed because it's what we knew and what we grew up with and what we, what made us. But it's, uh, it was time to move on. It was surprising, uh, to say the least. Uh, it was something that at least personally, I had not anticipated. I didn't see it coming, out, and I don't think I'm in the minority in that regard. What is left in sports, if not that? Now, how long is it gonna take to build that up again? And maybe I'm being very sentimental, and I probably am. But in the meantime, I just wanted so badly for the fans to say, this is just not gonna happen. Uh, you, you can't write the history of, you can't even write the, you can't even write the second paragraph of the history of the Big East without dealing with Georgetown and Syracuse. You hate to be the old guy in the corner of the barbershop and say, you know, things were better when I was a kid, but they're not going to find better in whatever conferences they go to, Catholic 7 or Syracuse and the ACC. They're not going to find a better rivalry. Uh, the history, the legacy, take 25 years to replace that. We don't have time for that. The landscape of major college athletics is changing, and so as Syracuse and Georgetown draw close this season and this series, we know that Syracuse basketball will be fine and Georgetown will be fine, but it won't be the same. You know, we can sit here and get nostalgic and say, oh, what was me, oh, the poor, this conference, oh, uh, or you just brace yourself and prepare yourself for new uh, uh, indifferent clashes, rivalries, um, moments that are going to happen. We've had great games with a lot of teams, but the games you remember are Syracuse-Georgetown. You know, you, you, you want a good opponent. I mean, you, that's what you measure yourself by. And we enjoy beating them, and we hated it when they beat us. And I think that's what the series will be remembered for. Uh, the level of play and the level of, of intensity by the players and the coaches. Uh, this is the game that Everybody looked forward to every year, and it never disappointed anybody. It's what happens, though. It's the world we live in, and maybe one day it'll be explained to somebody else and they'll understand it, because I don't.